Hey guys, I'm glad you're here. Please hit that subscribe button and give it a thumbs up. In this video, I'm going to take you guys through my approach to fishing remote areas when you don't have inside information. I'll share several tips and maybe some good secrets too. Winter trout fishing can be challenging and frustrating. I hope you'll find something in this video that makes your next trip more successful. Here we go. Generally speaking, speckled trout migrate upriver as saltwater temperatures begin to drop in their summer and fall habitats. As soon as a good bite is reported upriver, many anglers will completely abandon everything downriver and assume the entire mass of trout have migrated upriver that far. I'm not saying it's wrong to target these trout, but there are still plenty of trout downriver in early winter and even through the entire winter. This day is forecasted to be unseasonably warm. Good, right? Winter trout should be active when the air and water temperature rise. The challenge on this day is that by 8 a.m. it's going to be blowing 15 to 20 miles per hour. My strategy, not having fished here yet this winter, is a process of elimination. I'm going to start on the outside near the river and methodically work my way back up the creeks until I run across the trout. Each spot I stop, I'll be trying mirror lures, soft plastics, Paul Brown, and even live bait. See, that's the other frustrating thing about speckled trout. They can be picky eaters. Not every day, but I would say most days, there's gonna be a lure or a color or a retrieval method and speed that they prefer. Once you find it, you're golden. If you don't find it, it's gonna be a long day. I don't have much live bait with me this morning, just a few shiners left over from my last trip. I noticed several menhaden flipping in this creek mouth. I haven't had a strike yet. The wind's getting ready to start cranking. It'll be nice to have a good supply of live bait for later when I'm hiding in the back of a creek. Unfortunately, these were jumbos, bigger than what I wanted. Had they been five to six inch menhaden, I definitely would have kept them. About now, the wind speed is getting up pretty good. I've been at it over an hour and I haven't had a strike. I'm near the back of the creek, so I just decided to float a live bait and be patient for a while. It's been cold for the last three days, and even though today is mild, I'm thinking that the trout haven't gotten active yet. So I got the boat set up now, nose into the wind. I'm kind of at the tail end of this creek, and I'm just letting the wind carry the live bait right down the creek. Cover a lot of ground with a float bobber and a strong wind. Hard to do anything else today, it's so windy. There he is, that took a while y'all, but I found him. So you notice in that last video, I was fishing with a circle hook. I switched over to the treble hook for this one. And that got him pretty good. So it turns out I didn't find the trout and couldn't get another strike at this location. It's getting late in the morning and this is turning into one of those frustrating trips we've all been on. The struggle is real. By now, the water temp has warmed up to over 54 degrees. That's the warmest I've seen it in three weeks. I run to the back of a creek I've never fished in, but I remember checking it out two years ago and that it had some deeper water, about six feet. And wouldn't you know it, as soon as I hit that deep section, I hooked a fish. This fish was hooked on a pink and chartreuse trout trick. The retrieval method was basically dead stick with a slight twitch every few seconds. I'm not sure why, but the longer you fish this bait, the more the pink color fades away until it's almost all green. I'm using a 1 8 ounce jig head with a loop knot my leader is 15 pound fluorocarbon attached to my braid with an Alberto knot. 
Now here's a tip that may or may not surprise you. I'm using Procure, shrimp scent. I'm a believer in scents, especially when the bite is slow. Not only do scents generate strikes, they can generate second, third, and fourth strikes, as I'm gonna show you later in this video. Right here, you'll see a first strike. Second strike, and then I hook up on the third strike. I'm pretty certain it's the same fish coming back for the bait each time. I reapply the Procure every couple fish or about every 10 cast, whichever comes first. Be careful not to put any on the lower tail of the swim bait because you don't want to affect the action of the soft plastic. At this point, I've switched off the trout trick and went with a bigger swim bait. I'm obviously in a mostly smaller class of fish, and sometimes a bigger bait can produce bigger fish. Not the case here. Now this is pretty cool. I'm still using the bigger swim bait with the Procure. This fish hits the bait three times, and then as I'm reeling it in, he finally eats it. I think trout fishing is very challenging and strong wind, but sometimes you don't get to pick your days. You just have to make the most out of what you've been given. I appreciate you watching and thank you to all my subscribers. We'll see you next time.